The Options panel, accessed from the button on the master screen, provides many ways to customize the way in which the console interacts with you. This allows you to tailor it to either your preference or for the job you are doing. For example, a monitor engineer may well have a different set of options or preferences to a front of house engineer. We're not going to go through every option in this tutorial, but just talk about some of the commonly used ones and explain how they affect the way the console will interact with you. As you go through the options, you will see that some of the settings are marked with a small red asterisk. These settings are not session specific, but stored as a console setting. The settings that are not marked with the asterisk are stored with each session and set when each session is loaded. The options are split into tabs, grouping commands together by type. So let's start with the first tab. There are a couple of settings that are worth mentioning here. The auto expand EQ and dynamic settings control if the large EQ and dynamics panels open automatically when channel settings are adjusted and how long the panels stay open for when you have finished adjusting them. The default setting is two seconds, which some users find a little quick. It's also worth switching on the auto cancel second function option. Accidentally leaving the second function switched on will affect some important console operations. Mute becomes hard mute when second function is on. Aux sends to stereo auxes becomes the aux pan control. So unless you are totally sure that you will not leave second function accidentally enabled, it's worth considering setting this option to automatically cancel it for you. At the bottom of this tab is the option to have the screen assignment follow bank selection. When you're first setting the console up, you often find yourself switching between banks and screens. So to speed the process up, enabling this option reduces the number of button presses. Each time you select a bank, the screen assignment will follow. However, once you're done setting up and into mixing mode, you might find you need to switch this option off. The second tab relates to fader options. You can have touching the fader select the channel on screen. This assigns the channel to the channel controls down the right-hand side of the screen. You can switch on the 0 dB detent for all faders too. However, it's the fader touch control that needs a mention. There are two settings for this, free and protected. When in protected mode, the faders need to detect a positive touch before they will move. This means that you can't knock them from their current position. You have to positively touch and push the fader for it to move. In free mode, the faders do not wait for this touch before they are allowed to move. The next set of options are the solo options. If you're a monitor engineer, these will probably need setting. The solo assigns aux to faders and solo assigns aux to rotaries options enables you to quickly dial in aux mixes. When aux to faders is enabled, soloing an aux master drops the channel sends to that aux onto faders. Similarly, the aux to rotaries option puts the sends to the soloed aux on the top row of the underscreen rotaries. It's unlikely that you would use both of these together, but you have the option. Digico consoles do not have a channel select button. Channels are generally selected by touching them on screen. However, some users like to use the solo function to select the channel. This means that as you solo a channel to listen to it, it is automatically selected and assigned to the channel control. The disabled tab allows you to switch off a couple of console functions. The important one is the disable hard mute function. This stops you accidentally hard muting channels, generally as a consequence of leaving second function switched on. The meters tab sets meter related functions. Meter ballistics, the size of the meters displayed on the overview screen and the metering point. While these don't necessarily need adjusting, some users prefer to have their input channel metering point set pre-trim. 
This means that their input meter shows them the result of the head amp gain rather than the output of the digital trim module. For example, if your digital trim was turned down, your head amp gain was high, and if your meter was post trim, the level on the resulting meter would probably look okay, and you might be unaware that you are clipping your head amp. Flipping the metering point to pre-trim would show this problem immediately. The next tab contains session-related settings. These require a little explanation. The first two settings, Load and Save Startup Session, control the behavior of the console when it is turned on and shut down. Normally, when you turn the console off and then switch it back on again, you want it to come back on in the same state it was when you shut it down. This is achieved using the startup session. When you switch the console off, the software saves the state of the current session as this special startup session. Then, when you turn it back on, it is this session that gets loaded, returning you to your last working point. There are times when you don't want this to happen. If you opt not to load the startup session, it comes up as a standard default blank session. If you choose not to save the startup session, it will load the last saved startup session. This is useful if you always want the desk to boot up with a known session that won't get overwritten on shutdown. Also in this tab is the option to enable Waves Multi-Rack. You should only enable this if your SD9 has been upgraded with the appropriate Waves software. The option to enable the console network is also here. And if you want to network your console to another SD9 or PC remote, then you'll need to enable this option. Finally for this tab, the mirroring mode is set here. There are four options, and they set the way the mirrored devices work with each other. The audio settings and commands are always fully mirrored and therefore the same but you may want to change the way the physical surface interacts with the mirrored device. It's worth remembering that the equivalent setting on the mirrored console or PC remote will also need setting. In full mirror mode, the mirrored devices will fully mirror virtually all button presses, and this means that they are always displaying the same information. If you mirror two SD9s together and put them in expander mode, the two surfaces will act like a single work surface. You can view different banks and channels on each surface, but operations like Solo Assigns AUX to faders are performed on both surfaces. The remote mode separates all work surface interaction between the two devices. They operate entirely independently. This is the best setting for two-person operation across a pair of mirrored consoles. The one-way mirror mode is designed for a specific mirroring application with the SD7 console, so can be safely ignored on the SD9. The final tab, Status, allows you to see or ignore system alerts and status indicators. It's probably a good idea to have both of these switched on so that you are aware of any console environment alerts. You can also set how long these warnings are shown for.